team welcome back 21st may and uh, it's been a while since we were looking at enyot excel or enyot x rather and what we could do further on that version so i will definitely introduce you all once again to what is enyot briefly and what is the uh, code what is the requirement how do we change our framework so these are the three things that we want to address team and uh, uh, but before we go that i just want to briefly also talk about um, your idea i'm not sure how many of you are fresh into this so a couple of quick polls that i want to run your way so you will see this on your screen at this point so do you know any art um, is the first poll question team the point is very simple yes is you know about it you've gone through a few things you've ran a demo partially is you've been hearing about it but not didn't do anything much on it and then no idea is 60% um what i'm saying i'm reading the poll why do you not done anything on it yet so once we do this poll team can i get everyone to participate quickly please if you can put it on the screen click one of the options there and i know a couple of you are not able to for some reason i'm going to close this poll team in the next 5 seconds anyone left to vote okay so that's the poll result primarily uh, just about half of you are kind of aware what we do at enyot the remaining 50% plus have some idea or almost no idea about it so it's good time for us to talk about what is enyot team and this is an important subject so team uh, if i can talk about it as text <clears throat> let me know if you can see my screen i should be able to go back to the screen now so let's talk about some basic points so any or is primarily a test automation framework it helps qa automation um by pre implementing uh, various framework models we will talk about these and various framework models are primarily data driven keyword driven and form pf so if you know any or well it primarily also means that you've got good exposure to this framework team so um now what we have is a qa engineer can build automation tests on the cloud or excel there is zero coding here team that is involved and then the execution of the test and result give plenty of regression defect project we will talk about how and what it does during the execution so primarily we have someone who is building this uh, automation scripts and these are primarily enyot certified tester uh, who also know the execution they need to be very good in the execution so let me put in bracket now for change of framework we will get to the enyot certified developer team and we will talk about that so what do i mean by this as an automation framework so the core technology enyot was built on 
Selenium, WebDriver, and mainly Java. That is what we have used to be able to build this entire platform team. So the website for us is just go to anyot.com. That's our web address. It will have the demo version for you to download here. Download desktop app to use the team. That is where you can get started. Download desktop app to get started. With playing around any of it. So team, um, it is a very, very simple process. I'll quickly show you how you do it. You can repeat it at your end as well. So once you're on the website, you're clicking on this and it should be able to get you the latest version that we hosted, which right now is version 1.4. I'm gonna download this onto my local machine. It's about 137 MB overall, that's fine. I'm gonna go into C drive and maybe create a new folder here. And I'll say this is AAX test. So I will kind of delete this folder later. Now, <clears throat> the one I'm downloading is kind of coming here. It still seems to be doing the download. Let's make sure. Almost there. There we go. So I'm going to right click and basically open it with Windows Explorer, or if you have unzip, you could unzip it. It is it's the same. You could use this version on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Team. It works for all four. I'm going to take this entire folder, copy it into this test folder that I just created, and I'm going to put it in here. Whatever required libraries, Java program, the file structure, everything that is necessary for you to get started to work with Eniot is right there. So whoever has not done that, can you please perform the same step? You can do it in parallel while the session is going on. Um, and in the next 10 minutes, I'll move to the coding part. So now you have this folder team. Once you open this folder, you'll see a basic structure here. It has uh, some uh, folders and a lot of files. You can kind of ignore everything and just focus on this Excel file. These Excel sheets become the core of this engine in the sense, what is it? Okay, we have built a framework or a tool called Eniot. But what it does is dependent on totally on this Excel file. So we out here is where start talking about the application under test and divide that application under test overall into some functional modules. So larger the application, you can have many modules in it. Um, things like user management, e-commerce, shopping cart, um, what, uh, what else is the product catalog, API, all this could be your different various modules team. Now every module is like a functional block in your application. So what we do is that becomes nothing but test cases. So each module is built on many test cases. So that is how we are breaking it down from a larger picture, where if let us take an application like WhatsApp, for example, and I'll say that, you know what, this portion is doing something, this portion is doing something, this one else, this one something else, and so on. Now, I'm saying this is sending text, this are for group text, this are for voice or video, and let us say WhatsApp web. I'm talking about WhatsApp as an application. Now these are my functional modules, but within each module, I will have, let us say in web, what are the test cases? I will say WhatsApp web open, and then user is able to send messages. User is able to read messages. User can play 
uh, any media files that are sent on the WhatsApp web for us. So this become individual scenarios or test cases. So the whole application is one. Each application is broken down into smaller modules. Each module gets broken down into smaller test cases. Now, end of it, what is the test case? Let us say, what were we talking about here, team? It plays media. So, what does it mean? The first step here is open Firefox or Chrome. Go to whatsapp.web.com, that URL that we have. Then uh, open one chat, open video, click video, video play close video and close the browser so these become individual steps so for me what i emphasize is the fact that if every test step passes that particular test case is a pass if every test case in a module passes then the whole module is good then i'll say application is good we can release it so whatsapp as an organization maybe assigning like you know uh, you know 3000 people overall to do this it work so there's about let us say 500 people in this there are about 300 people in this 200 people working on this time so but eventually when they release they will also do the total version release there may be only small changes in one but they'll release the entire new version correct so so many people participants um, in the Scrum project coming together and delivering them all. That gives us the confidence. So we basically break down an application AUT into smaller pieces. Now comes the fun part. So test steps are then broken down into three prime portions teams. Basically, there is so far something called a keyword that is what to do. Like, should I click on a link? Should I enter some text into a field? Uh, should I select something from a drop down? That becomes your keyword. Let me write keyword so that you don't uh, get confused. Are you all with me, team? Even if it's a little basic, I want to show you this and then take you to the code after that. Can I get a confirmation? All good. Next comes my element identification. Element identification is how do I tell my test step that, oh, you know what? You will find this element in this space. Um, this is where the link is. This is where this image is. This is where this button is. For that, primarily we're talking about things like X path and so on. This is where to do that action. And then we have test data. Like if you need specific like username or password or you're searching for a text, you're expecting something, that becomes your test data. That is your additional information team that we're passing into it. Now these become the building blocks for any test. So every step must have uh, a keyword and a element ID or test data as needed. So we have to tell it what it does. Now, this any art framework is smart to know what you wrote in an Excel and perform the action on the application under test. So it saves the user having to write uh, each test case as a dot Java or dot Py program. Otherwise, every time we have to write a program and to maintain such large applications as individual programs is humongous. 
So there should be a smart sales mix. And that is what we were talking about. So we are saying that you don't know need of coding right in Excel. So that becomes very critical team. So this Excel sheet that I was trying to open up, which didn't open, I think it opened, sorry. Enable editing, close this. There we go. Um, I'll explain this Excel team. There's primarily a few tabs, about eight tabs in total that are critical for us. Uh, but where was I on this? Hmm. So whatever we want to do, instead of me going writing individual programs for each thing, like open browser, click element, find element, and do that, I write the same steps in this Excel sheet. So remember I said that we have an application under test. So one sheet is related to this AUC. What is that application? We are saying that let's assume that one each sheet is for one application under test. Then we have something called as modules under test. How I break down the applications into different modules. Then I have test cases under each module. Okay, this module, this is the test case. This module has two test cases. So each module can have hundreds of test cases. And every test case at the end belonging to each uh, module will have these tests. Open the browser, log into the application, do a bunch of activities and so on. Now, these are the four important sheets, everyone. So in the test steps, remember I was saying that the Three important components that we send here are these keyword element ID and test data. Those are the columns that are here. Let's see. Keyword, element, and then test data. So the fact of how we make it reusable and store them uniquely in different Excel sheets is where the reusable component comes in. So instead of hard coding, we maintain a reusable set of Excel sheets. So what are they? Test data, then element ID, then user defined keyword then built in keyword so this built in keywords are easy to understand they are the three defined things like open browser close browser click link and so on and you go to this built-in keyword sheet you will see the list of those things there is a latest version of it that i will show you team but it basically tells you what you can do like verify text or send keys and so on so a bunch of steps that you could do that are built in then what are udk's users can combine few steps few repeating steps together so I know that always the user has to log in and to perform that login, user has to open the browser, go to that URL, enter username, password, click on that link. So why should I write the same steps over and over again? That comes my second important sheet of user-defined sheet, where I say things like log in to this application. So it says open the browser, navigate to that application, wait for a few seconds, click on login link, uh, then enter the username, enter password, wait for the page to load, click on submit button. So now whenever I want, I will call login orange and all the steps will get executed. How do they get executed at detail level team requires some focus for you to understand going through these spreadsheets. But typically what we have are these which give us a sense of how things can get executed. I have one sheet team that I wanted to use. So I'll take this from my 
Ramna. Okay, I think I had it still here. Let's try it again. <coughs> you can keep Excel can be anywhere team, does not matter. I'm just putting another Excel also out here. Similar to that, even this is going to a different application to perform this action. I'll show you quick execution. Okay, this is X2. So primarily we're starting with any odd dot com slash audit. How does this application look when we log into it? So this is how it will look, login screen. Once you enter your username and password, you can sign. Just for your information, the join us is free. You can primarily any auth.com slash orange or any auth.com slash x join for free. So what happens, I will tell you later with it. But primarily, once you sign in team, whatever you are doing in this Excel sheet as an Excel format, I can also do it on the web UI. So I can say that I have so many uh, modules in it, and each module has many test cases within it, and every test case has test steps. Then we have the reusable components, what happens, and so on. What it also does is once you execute those executions, you can put the results up here and so on. So it's a completely hosted cloud version. So you can work on your cloud version team. You have a free one. Um, so you can always sign up and play around with it. Now, just for the matter of sake, and I'm emphasizing this, I'm taking this as an application under test. Is that clear, everyone? So I'm saying we are using as a sample application and test. Now, for this specific application, we wrote a few modules. Modules on login validation, UI validation, invalid, all this there. Actually, even this is not the latest one. Let me get it from the Git library. One second. Where is this? One second, team. I think it's in a different sky for me. It's a different system. I'll type it from there to here. It was looking a little better at Excel. And any questions so far, please? Members? I'm going to download this from my Skype. Load. Open. And I'm going to save this as a different file name team. So enable editing. Don't want to find them just now. Save as. So a lot of work that we do are on spreadsheet. And I'm going to browse to our test folder. I want to keep this somewhere team. In the drivers also I'll save. There is a folder that I have called drivers. I'm just putting it there because I use it commonly and I can show that. So let me go to the drivers folder and demo X3. Similar, same thing, but it's just that um looked a little bit more scheduled. I'm sorry, one second.
All right, I'm back. So I'm going to use this team and let's put this into the folder that we have, just so it's handy for us to see. We created it in your tech test and Excel. So I'm going to leave it here as more screen. Okay. So let me explain this to you, team. What happens? I told you, right? There are all the sheets, a application under test. We don't much use anything from here. Module test cases, test test go. Then we have the reusable one, UDK built-in keywords and so on. I'm not going through each and everything, team. Uh, but primarily, I have only three test cases selected for execution. A user gets to choose what test cases and can do the same on multiple browsers or different sets of data. All these possibilities are there with the framework and you don't touch a code for this. Even at a module level, you can say, I do not want anything to run from this module. And you could select something from a specific module. This is the latest set of built-in keyword team. Uh, so earlier there were about only 60 odd. Now we've crossed a little over 100 and it defines a lot more scope for us on what we can do on different applications. Eniot X, uh, there's one more point, very important that I want to add, works for web app and can be also customized to uh, mobile and um, API relay also. So that's a good scope that we have. Okay, so let me not take any more time. I'm just gonna do a few executions. So three test cases, I'm gonna close this, um, get everything cleaned up for a simple execution. So C drive, any your text test, any your Excel, and launch this team. Double click and launch this executable jar file. When you launch this, it primarily is the starting point for everything. It is the demo version team, up to 500 test sets you can execute at a time. You cannot do more than that. We just log that using a simple code. Uh, but as we release it to customers, we take the restriction service. Now it is by default there to demo.xls. I will change that name to demo x3 or I can choose from here. I can go to that specific folder, come in here, take that and Start the execution. Execution. Please notice what happens to this list of folders here when that execute automation test starts. Team, there will be new folders that will get added here, and it will start getting populated. Primarily log, result, and test output. Now let's focus on the application under test. It will launch the browser. It will kind of go through that execution right now. It's gone to anyon.com slash x. That is the URL. And it's kind of trying to log in. It's entered. So these highlights that you see of dark green means it wants, it identified an element and successfully performed the step. The goal is just when it identifies green is after it finishes it. Is checking to see that on dashboard page it is able to find all those labels right now and we logged in okay now let us say you have your own user id and password for any of you can say take the same excel and all you do is change the username and password to your account team and then you're set with it Okay, so now it started another execution. So it finished one test case, it opened, it did everything and it closed. While this is happening, you would notice that um, the result is the main folder that's getting populated. It gets the name of the test run name that you gave. By default, it has the date and timestamp. So it takes that. If you change it here, the run result folder also will change. So in here comes a few more things like my report as to what happened, how it happened and so on. And then a few more things. So let that execution happen in the background. And I want to talk about a few things here. So here I'll talk about 
code is low for any odd. So how does how do we do? So first, what we do, team, is um, take inputs. Second, is um, we prepare a test execution Excel with only relevant information. Then execute the above Excel line to line report um, step execution test result. That's the thing. That's primarily what it does. We give the user input. How did we give? We it's automatically closed after the execution team now. We give the user input uh, by sending what Excel it is, how long you want to put the wait. Primarily, the Excel sheet is the main thing. Then internally, it prepares the test execution. What it does, I will explain to you in very brief terms. Here is my main Excel. It has got plenty of content. It has got like five modules, a lot of test cases, and many test steps in this. Now, I may not want to be executing everything. So I have chosen what I want to execute, correct? And for a lot of these steps, I'm saying, oh, you know what? To verify this text, it's a reusable element. You will find it with this name in this sheet. So I have to go to element ID sheet and control left, find this. And I know that I find it by using XPath, and this is the value of that. Okay, that is good. Now, but instead of having all this multiple sheet, the this step here generates for us this Excel. Go back to the result. Test run. Do you see that Excel? Test run underscore the test name, whatever you have given. Dot XLS. Now comes the execution. So let's see, did it open the test run? Did it open? See, instead of having eight sheet, now it just has blindly the test cases. And for each test case, what are the steps? No more parameterizing, no more nothing. So it's like a middle step in our execution. So I read this, I prepare what I want to do. Then we open the browsers and we start doing execution. After all that is done, my run result comes. And it tells me at each step what happened. If it passed, very good. How long did it take? And if it failed, why did it fail? And so on. Now, you also have a HTML report that gives me a detailed idea. It's an extent report where we are saying for each test case that we had, so there were three test cases. The first test case, this is what happened. Everything passed. So each step, what I gave, all the details are there and no issues in performing them. And it'll also tell me at a high level, there were 84 steps. It took me about two and a half minutes to execute, 100% pass. Now the same thing, if I make an error, let us say, uh, which test case, let us take sidebar menus, correct? So I'll go to the sidebar menus, they're here. And do you see this team sub menu items? Sub menu items is basically nothing but it is going and checking if all of these items are available. Now it is saying I want to see AUT here, I want to see modules here, test cases here, test steps here, in what order it wants to see what. If I have to get an error into it, I'm going to go to this element ID sheet. And in here, what we gave XPath for this module and so on, I will say this XPath is incorrect. Some dummy thing I said. Similarly, I'll go to test data. And in test data, we're saying that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I want to see reusable components. But here also, I'll change this to reusable XYZ components. So these two are defects. 
that should show up for us. So I'll save this as x3 underscore error. And let me re-execute this new one. So go launch, browse, select our Excel, and say execute. Now, I also want you to observe what happens during the execution. The highlight may become red green when it does not match with what happens. So it's also visually something that you can observe during the execution, like a demonstration back to us, whatever we wrote. So it's easy with this highlight, okay, that this is what we're doing. So gold and green are good. Gold we used for identifying green that we performed anything on. Everyone with me, I know for some of you it must be a little repetition, but now I'll show you the change that we need to do team and how we can get to achieving it. Can I get a feedback from everyone, all with me? Any questions? Thank you. Uh, is that Excel integrated with Java Eclipse internally to run the reusable methods? No. So we read this Excel. Our Java program will read that Excel when we give that information in this launcher. And then, based on that Excel, it will execute. I don't know if we were observing team. Anything went right or wrong. We'll see. And the more larger regression tests with you know hundreds of test cases takes hours of time to use. So we want to see how we can make these things faster rather than slow each time. So when it's not able to identify something, it takes a little bit longer. It waits for the default timeout before it gives out. <clears> that <throat> seems to be this is the third one. I don't know yet from the look of it if everything works correct or not, unless we go back to the report and see what where. And do you see this red text and all that? You could verify that. You could verify field level verification, what is happening, and make sure you can validate a lot of that. Now, let's look at the new result. See, I have a new folder. It's got nothing to do with my old one. Unlike the old one, there's also now a screenshots folder. And I can open it and see the different screenshots it has taken, but I don't know where and why and what. A great way to look at it is go back to our report and it will tell you which test case failed and if it failed where did it fail so scroll down do you see this is the issue and primarily tells me that verify text failed test data was this we were expecting to see this but actual is this make sense everyone and that's an issue and why did it happen? How does the application look at that point? This is how. And it points to me that this is the issue, the red outlined one. Now the same with the second one. It could be another type of an issue where it says that, oh, you know what? I went through everything and element ID so and so. And it says that, you know what? No such element is found. So all of this as to what has to be done, where it needs to be done is the one that we have programmed into a team. So now, one of the key things that we're talking about from a 
enhancement perspective, the reason why we're meeting with it. So, so far so good everyone, understood the basic, simple fundamentals of it. Now, what is the requirement? Make test faster. How can we do that? So, one of the things that is happening team is the concept of classifying each step. When I say step, we're talking test step. Test step as critical or not. Now the logic that I want to use is if a critical step fails, then close browser and move to the next test step. So the reason is when we do larger execution scene, it becomes almost impossible for us to wait till the end. Let us till the login itself fails. In this case, now giving you an example of what the issue could be. <clears throat> so the same error, and let us say, uh, test step here, actually test data itself. I fail the password to something else. I change the password to something incorrect. And now I'm re executing this. All right. We will notice the time it has taken to execute this test <clears throat> compared to my other earlier test. So it takes much longer to execute when errors are happening. So now what is happening? Password is incorrect, so it will not log in. If it does not log in, then what about the remaining step? So what we want to do is if a critical step fails, then close browser and move to the next step. If it is non-critical, nothing different okay now can i open up my code everyone <clears throat> and kind of walk you through where we are what we're doing so this is the code now understand this concept how we do this so anyone beginning into programming application development or testing you should get the perspective so it's going through that execution team. So it'll stuck, it'll get stuck there because it's trying to execute every step after that. I am trying to say, man, if you're stuck with this sign in login itself, there's no point in going to the further step. That is the change that we want to bring. So I said everything is written in Java and Selenium. So all of that is our main overall package and so on. We put it into an Eclipse ID. Helps me to kind of manage everything. Internally with my developers, I also use GitHub to if there's any code level changes that we need to do. But this is one version of it. So this is version 1.4. I will change it to version 1.6. The file somewhere was missing team. Uh, so I want to make sure that we get it into six using the same version and then create a new jar file out of it. And then I take the jar file and distribute to you all. So you can use it. So the dev <coughs> team is focusing on coming up with the latest jar file for you. And the QA team can then use these latest versions. Now, is that test execution done? Let's see. It's still doing team. It's taking time. <clears throat> so quick comparison. The first one which we executed without any errors. See, no screenshot means no errors also. Took us 2 minutes 42 seconds. <clears throat> Same thing actually. 
And now let us see this latest one. And I can open these reports while the execution is being done also. But it's still stuck at the first test case itself. It's taking so long of a time just to finish this. Did you observe it's almost taken three, four minutes since we started that. Once it finishes one test case, report.html will come in here. It has to finish at least one test case. Then it creates the report.html for us. Back to our source code and keep an eye on this. Still trying to perform step by step, thinking that we have logged in, waiting for the application and trying to do this. Once it closes, then this will come true. Just want to show you what's happening. Come on, faster. We're almost there. Still trying. <laughs> Give it a minute, team. All right, there we go. So we got report.html, and this is mostly only one test case so far. And see, it has taken four minutes just for just one test case. Why? It went to this, it went till here, enter username, password, it clicked. Wait for page to load. Verified title of the page, that's fine. Verified test setup next. So it's saying no such element, it's stuck there. Each of the steps is taking time, too. And it could finally close the browser and end it. Okay? So that is the issue that's happening. Now let's look at the code. The whole code, what you see, the folder structure that you have here, the one you download from rinyard.com, is exactly the same folder structure in Eclipse, everyone. Exactly. The only thing that is missing in that is the source folder, where we have this entire source code. This helps us to be able to do advanced customization. The first and most important one is our UI code.java. This is the one when we run, you basically start that launcher, which gives you the desktop app to enter information. This was built using Java Swing, and um, you should be able to get onto this very easily. Um, that is the code. We are not looking at any changes on this. So this is already saying in your Excel version 1.6. Um, so let me change it to 1.61. Searching for 1.6. Remember I was saying prepare run.java. This is the one. It prepares everything. What to do, where to do. And gives us this output. Are you all with me, team? Don't get confused. There's nothing much in here to be confused. One repetition of the session will really help you to get going. So what was it saying? Hmm. So prepare run.java takes our bigger Excel file and converts it into this Excel sheet here. All right, everyone? Now, hmm, ding, ding, ding. What am I saying? Okay. So, in the sheet that I have, I'm going to make a fundamental change. It will start with a template change in my Excel sheet. I'm going to save this theme as Alt F A as X4. Let's remember that this is the template. In this, the most important thing here is I need to say which step is critical and which is not critical. By default right now, our application is assuming everything is critical. There is this column called output here, team. We are not currently using this column. 
I want to change this column to critical and say if it is yes or no to them. Okay. So any of these steps, I say if it is critical, then we want it to pass. Um, it to pass. Else we log out. The same we have to do for all the steps. Now let us only look at few test cases. Test case two, seven, and nine in this case. So the better way to do is just do a filter and go here and we have test case 2, 7 and 9. These are the three of interest for us and let's focus on these test teams. Okay. Now the login to the application is critical. Waiting for the page to load, verify test setup text, all of these are critical. I don't want any of the steps to fail. From here, I will say these are non-critical. Why? If it executes or not, it does not matter because one could be an issue, the other may not be an issue. So I'll say these are not critical as long as it a login correctly. Now that login has to be there. So the same, I have to follow it here, team. I just want to make sure. The best one is to put yes to all. And then we can do the remaining things for that. Actually, it doesn't take this year. So I just say no to all of these steps. It's not critical. Again, just the login is critical, and none of these other steps are critical. Are you getting what I'm saying, team? So the logic is very simple that we want to implement. If a critical step fails, then close browser and move to the next test step. No, sorry, test case D. End this test, end this current test case. That is what we're trying to do. So we don't have to keep on getting stuck on the same uh, scenario at, the, at that time. So export, I said no. Now let's make sure we do similar thing in UDK team. In UDK, after test data, there is no column. So here, I will create one more column like this. Call it critical. Yes. 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 All the steps are critical here. By default in this, I will give that all are critical teams. I'll just right click paste as values. Now see what I mean to say, we're using which UDK always to log in. UDK is login orange here. Login orange here. Login orange. So let's look at this login orange. Log out, login orange. Open the browser, critical. Navigate, critical. Wait, not critical. So I'll say no to this, okay? Click on login, it has to click. Enter username, enter password, wait, submit. All these are critical things. And after this, we also can add one more step that is critical. Let us say right click and insert, copy cell. Uh, I can call it 9 or 8.1 also, doesn't matter. Verify dashboard. So if I have logged in team, I want to verify that the dashboard is there. So where does it do that? Main menu panel is displayed. Yeah, even this is fine. Or verify a set up text. Just seeing. Give me one second, everyone. Even this step is fine too. Check if the main menu panel is displayed. I'll check if this is there. If this is there, then that's good. That means I've logged in. Check if main menu, built-in keyword, verified text, and this. One second, something. Ah, okay. Delete, shift cell left. All UDKs. 
Where is this coming from? And this is also critical step. So I've added one more to this team. Yes. I think I'll take another 10 minutes at least to get that code uh, logic into play because I took plenty of time to explain this so far. Now I've added a column called critical. Now remember this. So this becomes important for us in the code. So I'm going to go back to my code. In my prepare run, it's primarily preparing everything and it is going to get all those content into it. So all row counts and column counts team. Mm. I'm just looking at this column. So it has data type and a little key. Why do I need that here? Is it critical or not? I put it there. Do I even need it in prepare run or is it just an execute test? Let me do one thing, team. Let me execute this. I will see if this critical column is getting updated the test step because it's not more than a few and in the test steps oh I was changing it in the wrong column I think team see I did a mistake totally moved it up I have an older version luckily let's take that Element by since they're all reusable, most of these are empty, so that's fine. I did it in the wrong column team. This content was supposed to be in the other column. Come on, just selecting one column and putting it into this. What? I don't think we'll be able to complete all of this today. At least the coding part, I can get started now. But, uh, tick, tick, tick. Delete this. Nothing here. Relevant. Take this. Taking it one test case at a time, team. Let's step a little bit on the colors. That's okay for now. There we go. So this becomes my new sheet. Now I'm going to run it on that sheet, team. The reason I want to run is I want to see the test not the execution of home, but just the, I'll show you what I mean. What is the output sheet looks like? If the output sheet looks good, then so here, this will get updated team. I want to give it a second. Okay, now it's launched, so that's good, which means this is updated. I can open this right now. Don't open it while it's getting done. So critical yes or not should be here now. Okay, do I have that content here? Critical yes, 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 it says yes to all. It says yes to few, no to all, very good. This is set for us. So whatever we're putting there is coming to us in column J after test data. Now comes that the only change I have to do is in execute test. Let me explain to you this code team. Execute test will take this sheet as an input and go through each test case at a time and then pick the relevant steps for it. 
from here. So let's see how it does. So there's a before test where we're setting our log4j uh, report, how it should come, all of that. And I'm also um, <clears throat> Excel test tests are here. The Excel test cases from the first sheet, Excel test tests from the second sheet. So Excel test tests and column, this will be 10 or 11. So start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. So primarily, just a note for myself somewhere else, I Excel test step, uh, whatever row, 9 is a critical yes slash no. All right, team, that is where the content is coming. Now, the main test. Main test is basically going through these regressions. Okay, there's one test at, okay, that's at before test. And here is the main test. The first for loop is go through every test case in this sheet. For each test case in this sheet, go to the next test step and make sure that um, so test case, okay, it's not test, tick, tick, tick. So here is for every step from there on. And I'm reading all those things. The critical step I've added team. I was doing a little program. So I said if it is critical step is here. So that's good. Now let's search for this. So just declare that variable and initialize everyone. Okay, makes sense, correct? Now, when do I have to take an action on it? When the step fails. So I try a piece of code. We call that execute keyword, which is the main thing. It says what keyword to call. See here, look, execute keyword. Should I open a browser? Then you go to low level keywords and say open browser and so on. If you want to close, close the browser, do something else. So all of these are predefined reusable uh, programs that we've returned to or methods. So we just have to call based on what we have entered as the name for the keyword step here. So depending on that keyword column, I'm calling those functions that we want. And now let's um, look at uh, the execution of it. Uh, Bhargavi, that's good. Show me, please, because uh, I would like to see it from uh, the correct implementation, because I'm not sure if I've seen it earlier. And I did share the code that most of the members did not see. So you need to share that with me. Reach me offline, please, on Skype. Send me that. Let's see what the code change was. Oh, I did. <laughs> okay, but let's see. Now, what are we doing here? So here is where the test case can fail. I'm saying execute keyword is doing it. And I wrote this. No, but I don't think I'd implement it now. It's critical breakout after quit browser. After quit browser. Yes, here we go. So going back, execute keyword. If that try fail, then I come directly to the catch. So catch is basically, I don't know, something happened and it's saying do all of these. Let it do everything to you. After this is where I'll say if the critical step dot equal yes, 
then my intent is to break out of this for loop and come to the next step scale. So it should, if I say break, it will come out here. I don't think I need a stop. Where should it come? Break it. The only thing I need to do is call the execute keyword close browser or just call close browser because we want to close it. Close browser and then we're going to break from here. But where do I break from here? I'll come out of the first loop, which is good. And I'll go on to the next one. So that is what. Let's see. Now, the same thing also can happen here, where if it is pass, that's good. If it is fail, if it is not equal to pass, then we have to repeat that step again. The difference here is screenshot. Okay, let me see. Let's just is underscore result t dot equals pass. Let's case underscore result is pass. So it is not equal to pass. Then the same test fail verification failed. Okay. Okay. So it is green. And this is where we are highlighting things as red. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And see if this works for right here. Is it not missing something? I see. So if not equal to pass, it has this. For whatever reason. It will do either and it will come to the end of it. So I don't need to repeat this here. Okay, so I'm just looking here, team. Give me one second. If it is not equal to pass, This else is coming with this else 15. That's the problem, I think. Where did it go? So we're doing all of these steps. It is not equal to pass. And if it is one time use, I'm doing something else, and now it looks good. And in this case, again, I'm breaking out. This looks to be more like what we need, but unless we test it, we cannot say it. So let's try now. I'm going to take the X5. Right? 
and in this i added the critical column as yes or no a kind of almost gave what is critical and what are not here so if it is no it should move on and only if it is yes are we saying close browser and break from that close browser and break now let's run this. So the difference of execution here team is I'm going to take, um, start the execution from UI code.java within my clip. So I just wanted to save everything to one. Let me hope that it saves the all. Save all first. And let's execute. And we're giving demo score. And six seconds, let's execute this. Oh, this one does not have errors, right? I think this one will run fine. Let's see the regular run. And the results of this will keep getting updated in this folder. So for me to go directly there, right click and say show in my system explorer. Execution is happening team out here. Let's see if it has got the right credentials. If it's got the right credentials, everything works fine, that's good. If it does not, becomes the challenge. So we need to run it on the error one. Or I'm going to take six four and do the same thing for this. Test data, change the password. And then and save this as expose underscore error. So the good part here is you're also seeing the execution. You can debug, you can put breakpoints, you can watch your variable. You can do plenty of things when you're running it from here. But you don't need to always change the code. So that's why we kind of hide it. The results page, I think, did open up. Okay, results. And we're running here. And it seems to be executing everything fine. So at least the latest one is not disturbing the regular flow with correct information. And let's try now the other one. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to put breakpoints and try and see what's happening at that. That's about what I had, team. I'm going to make remaining changes, and I need to show how I package it together and release it. Any questions, please? You can raise your hand, team, if you have a question you want to speak. Hi, honey, did you have a question? So let's see where we are. It's doing it. I think it's done. There we go. It's all done with the first one. Now let's see the second one and what happens to it. And this time, team, we're going to give the one with the S. Does it make sense what we were doing today? How we have the framework and are we doing some changes regularly as we need to to keep improving it? So this is also the counter team. How many steps is preparing of 500?
then there is one more um, requirement that i wanted to add which is severity if it is severe then it has also got to send alert maybe as an email so i'm expecting that it closes the browser at this point t uh, because the step was critical it is the next step i'm not sure which step we gave as critical there we go that was good it did not spend too long wasting on that and we could also give more details into our report saying the critical step failed hence quit the test case so for that what i will do is in our execute test <clears throat> log is fine not just to the log but i haven't shown you the log itself but i'll add one more report to this log team at this point and i'll say Is not in four. The critical step failed. Stopping test case execution. Okay. and i don't need to give any other further details okay that's something we can expect to see so it closes the browser and we could now let's see so uh, back to our report to see both the results team so we did one with basically no errors and it would have taken almost the same time 2 minutes a little over 3 minutes 8 seconds this time and going back to the latest one with the error it took 1 minute 56 seconds because i don't think it executed all the steps so first one it went through pass pass check if the main menu panel is displayed no no such element exception so that's it close sidebar menus check if the main menu panel that's it close good the main yeah so it's basically not doing anything up to the critical step for html report yes we use extend report key so now when i did this change and in the code where i also added that critical step fail and let's kind of rerun this code now and you could change the theme if you believe your application is fast it doesn't require too much of time out then that's fine too so once it finishes one test case i know that uh, it has primarily done the it will generate the extend report start the test so let's go to the new folder the html there we go the reason i did this rerun to see if i could capture that information out here saying this is the one do you see the theme at the end i've added the thing critical step fail stopping test case execution so it gives some clarity to someone who's looking at hey how come it stopped here so i did a spell error 
of things say closing browser and stopping test case execution. Now this seems to be kind of intact for me team for a version launch. So I'll just package it quickly and show you how I get the new version. No, we are in automation report. The other tab is goes takes us to the extend report. So what you see currently is the automation report. The other tab is extend report. And now I have all of this. So primarily results and all this are some things that don't come in team for us. What we are doing is this is a whole project team. So I right click on it and I basically say export this project as a runnable jar file. You have multiple options for it. So under Java, I'm selecting the runnable jar file. Then next, it tells me what is the launch configuration. There's so many .java classes, which is the one we should start with. I'm saying UI code .java. So you basically launch that when we execute it. And it wants an export destination. So I'll say browse this. And let me take it into there. It drives. I'll say AX score one point six. And I'll save it here as a jar. Now it just say extract required libraries into generated jar and say finish. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. I should do one more execution team after that. That is when it basically ha takes the latest versions also. So the change that I did here, I don't think is reflected. Let me do it, but sh show you where it is now. So now what I do is very simple. It has the same packages, everything as my old one. This is any not here. Let's go to C drive. Any not test. Actually, let's go to download. Open with Windows Explorer. Then, and I have this folder, correct? So I'll copy this theme. Let's see what I'm doing. I'll take it into this A1.6 and put it here, this folder. Just bear with me. And the two minutes and done team on this. So it requires the folder structure team. So this is the folder structure for it. So I, all these files are necessary, right from images to class paths, uh, browser jars, libraries. And here is the new jar file that we just got from Eclipse. I'll put it in here. Delete this old version. Okay, now this is the latest version for me. That's it. I, I'll change this also to let's say 1.6. And I'll just zip this whole thing. Send to compress this folder. Now this will be a new package that I would want you to download to try that latest one. That's how it works. Any questions team? I'm kind of done with this. So there are a few more enhancements that I need to be making. I'll keep making this. Hopefully I'll invite you also to this session. May I know what version of Selenium is used? Uh, should be the latest one. So look at uh, browser, windows, and your Chrome drivers here, and your library has all your other ones. All right. 
Ita, did you have a question? Your hand was raised. Anyone else with a question, please? All right, great. So team, I will uh, share this with um, the member and you could try on the same version then. Okay, I'll put it into Google Drive and share it as well. Thanks very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Um, yep, look forward to the next session. So team Java developers, all the Java Python developers primarily, if you're more interested in doing practical coding and all that, let me know. We can get you into uh, some of these activities. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your evening or day. We'll see you next time. Let me quickly just upload this and I will share the link. Where should I put it? I'll see where I can put that link. Thanks, everyone. Bye then.